Greetings everyone! On the bench today I have a backup power supply. It's this APC model back UPS 450. It's a cheap $45 Walmart special. I got it because I need to you know protect my computer from power outages which seems to happen enough around here and I've been lucky that it didn't screw up my computer. The last time it happened was the day before I bought this thing. Uh, I've been using this thing a couple of months so far. Everything's been good. But the power went out for like 30 seconds. My computer was on. Luckily it was just sitting idle. And, you know, Windows has to do some recovery stuff. I guess there's open files and things when the computer is turned off when it's still or I should say when the power is removed from it when it's not properly shut down so I, I just wanted a cheap solution I, I just need a minute or two to shut the computer down until the power comes back so that's why I bought this cheap little unit and here's the box here's the model and uh, I measured my computer sitting idle with the monitor it's around 41 watts and that shows you the run time of course the larger units have more run time but again I don't need that and 180 watts is about five minutes but yeah my computer uh, doesn't use much power just sitting idle with the monitor. The monitor uses about 13 or 14 watts. The computer sitting idle about uh, 27 or so. So the total is around 41 watts. And here's a quick measurement of it. Here's the power draw of my computer with the monitor. It's hard to see those LCD displays. But it draws about 40 watts sitting idle. And the monitor is drawing about eh, 12 or 13 of those watts. Now when I'm doing something on the computer, like watching a video, it might go up depending on the resolution and all that. It could go up to 45, 50, sometimes 60. The highest I ever had it was when I was encoding a video and it went up to 85 so that's as high as I've ever seen it now again that's the computer and monitor so the computer itself is probably going up to around 70 low 70s 72 or 3 maybe so what I want to do is tear this thing down to see what's inside but first, I got it plugged into a power strip, and I have this enormous 200 watt bulb. You can see right there. So I'm going to fire this thing up. And there it is. And I'm going to turn, that does its own little test, so it's on power right now. There. So yeah, it was on battery for a little bit, so it ran right through that just fine. So anyhow, I'm going to turn power off. There. So now it's running on battery. 200 watts. Nice and bright. And let me... So it beeps to tell you it's running on battery, and the light blinks there. So let me turn the power back on and then it comes out of or off of the battery backup so yeah it works just fine all right without further ado let's grab a screwdriver and open the thing up and we're in there's not too much to this thing there's this pc board and a four and a half amp hour 12 volt gel cell so I don't think it was meant to be user replaceable, but you know, you could change this when it goes bad and 
three or four years, depending on how much use is put on it. So what happens is battery current comes in here and is switched by these two MOSFETs into this switch mode transformer, which boosts the voltage up to line voltage. Then that DC voltage is chopped up by this H-bridge configuration, which consists of four MOSFETs. And because the current's fairly low, they don't need to be heat synced. And that chops it up into an AC and DC, what they call a modified sine wave, but it's really a square wave with some dead time. And of course we have some relays, it has to isolate the line and the battery side. And it has some filtering and surge protection as a capacitor, some MOVs, and I see it has a little gas discharge tube there as well. On the back of the board, that's where all the little controller chips are. There's probably a microcontroller and some switch mode controller chips. There's another little switch mode transformer here that might be for the low voltage that charges the battery when the unit's plugged in you know changes the converts the high voltage down to low voltage DC for uh, running the unit and charging the battery I suppose the case says here I don't know if you can see it, it says FR ABS which would be, I guess it would be flame retardant ABS, which is nice to have, especially when you have high currents and with this battery in there. And of course these uh, MOVs, which can let off fireworks when they go bad sometimes. So I guess uh, that's probably about all there is to this thing, not much. Kind of curious what switch mode transistor they're using there. These heat sinks are not really that large. So I looked it up, and it's an IRLB8314, optimized for UPS inverter applications. Very low RDS on. And they're saying here. With the gate to source voltage of 4.5 volts, it's only 3.2 milliohms. That's very good. At 10 volts, it's 2.4. You know, that's an order of magnitude better than the IRFZ44, which is pretty common MOSFET for low voltages. Oh, this thing went to sleep on me. But this does have a pretty low drain to source voltage of 30 volts so they're meant for uh, pretty much 12 volt applications and the MOSFETs they're using for the H bridge are the IRF 640s which are pretty common just a note to myself in reassembling this thing is the battery faces down with the terminals on the bottom facing the board side and then it'll fit together nice and easy. And when I get it together, you have to remember to connect the battery. See, this little thing comes up and plugs in and connects the battery internally so it's ready for operation. Okay, so I got it all put back together, tested it out, and put back into service. So I was booting up the computer. And I get a message on the screen. It says, you must connect with Microsoft Services. Well, I don't want to connect with Microsoft Services. I just want to use my computer. And you don't get an option to opt out. At least, I don't know of one. There might be a secret way, all that crap. But you either have to do it or remind in three days. Yeah, that's just annoying. Microsoft, why do you have to do that crap? But anyway... I'm happy with it. The only thing I don't know about this UPS is how long it'll last. Batteries will last usually three to five years, depending on how often they're used. But, you know, I can always go 
down to Parts Express, and they have these batteries for under 20 bucks, so no big deal as long as the thing lasts. And that's my review of the APC UPS. Now, one quick thing here. I have my old camera. I'm packing it up and sending it over to, or I guess down to, Radio TV Phono Nut. If you're not familiar with his channel, he does repair videos on old, usually old tube type things. And his camera quit. And I must say, people were very generous to me. Somebody gave me this oscilloscope. Somebody gave me this EEV blog meter. Somebody bought a nice camera for me. So, you know, I've just passed the love along, I guess you could say, and uh, help somebody out and uh, send them my camera here. Yeah, it works fine, good for making videos, better than what he had, so hopefully he can get use out of that. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching.